The Constitution is the guide which I never will abandon. These resounding words were spoken by our very first president, George Washington. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Abhijit Jean Keepal, and I'm here to explain to you why the Constitution is still relevant today. The Constitution. This solemn doctrine is the gateway to the freedom we Americans are so gratefully entitled to. It confirms our God-given individual rights and ensures us that all Americans stand equal below the law. This mighty document is the blueprint, allowing the United States to be free, to be stable, and to be prosperous. As our founding fathers ambitiously signed the pages of the Constitution, they wanted to create a legacy. They hoped these pages would create a lasting impact in all Americans till the end of time. And that is exactly what the Constitution has done, ladies and gentlemen. The United States Constitution has overseen our growth from weak, scattered colonies and guide us safely through processes that might have broken many other nations. For example, although the American Civil War involved a lot of fatalities, it was the ratifying of the United States Constitution by the Southern states that allowed the preservation of not only the U.S., but also its people. Now, this ending of the Civil War is nothing compared to that of the Taiping Rebellion in China which was one of the most massive and most bloodiest of wars to ever take place in history. Unlike the American Civil War, which took the Constitution close to a year to resolve, the Taiping Rebellion took 15 years and millions of dollars to clean up. But why was there such a dramatic difference? It is because China did not have a sound, powerful Constitution to guide them throughout the way. Now, if we view our society today, read the newspaper, search the web, or turn on the news, we see crime, we see murder, and overall, we see immoral activities. In fact, it is because of these heinous activities that many individuals think the Constitution is not relevant for modern time. However, this statement is powerfully refuted once we view our justice system. The United States justice system reprimands individuals who commit such felonies to uphold the writings of our founding fathers. Al Capone, for example, a gangland boss who has committed murders, government infiltrations, and many other heinous crimes, would still have several predecessors roaming the streets today if it were not for the Constitution mandating the government to find, try, and punish him and many other individuals who commit similar felonies. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all powerfully impacted by the words written in the United States Constitution. My family, originating from India, left everything they had behind to travel to the United States. They did this so their children would be valued, so that they would be granted equal opportunity no matter what state they moved to. Now I, being an American-born citizen, have the right to practice whatever religion I may please. I have the right to express myself without being reprimanded by the government. And most importantly, I have the God-given right to be treated equally, no matter what race, no matter what sex, or no matter what nationality opposes me. This freedom goes beyond the color of my skin. It is further reflected through my everyday actions, the way I speak, and even something as simple as my wardrobe. This bracelet, in my language called a karda, such a simple, unnoticeable accessory. However, this karda represents who I am, represents what I stand for, and represents what my ancestors fought and gave their lives for. And in the United States, I'm able to proudly walk across the streets with this karda illuminated on my right hand. But in several other countries, in Saudi Arabia, North Korea, Afghanistan, this gara would be absolutely unacceptable. I would be sought out, tried, punished, and possibly even killed. But thanks to the United, excuse me, thanks to the Constitution, we all have the right to freely express ourselves. Now. If your minds are still wavering, dissettled, or dissatisfied to the claim that the United States Constitution is relevant for modern time, let's take a look back and view all we have discussed today. We have reviewed three separate eras, 
all which resonate the Constitution's relevancy. I chose these three distinct examples to show you how the Constitution has maintained relevant no matter what time era it goes through. My first example was of the 1860s, a century and a half ago. And my last example was of present day in which I was a living embodiment of how the Constitution continues to inspire, continues to guide, and continues to influence to the decisions made by America and its people. In fact, it is because of the Constitution that America and its people are so well known and respected. But I would like to point out the fact that the United States Constitution has not remained the same throughout all of time. In fact, many changes have occurred to the Constitution to help guide it throughout the next generation. But it is these guideways that make the Constitution a living document. Our Founding Fathers knew that things would change according to the different times. Thus, they created the Constitution in such a way that it is always open to constant change. Whether this be by ratifying a new amendment or appealing an existing one, the United States Constitution can always be altered to best fit the needs of the people. And it is this ability of alteration that makes the Constitution relevant in the past, makes it relevant in the present, and will continue to make it relevant in the future. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the Constitution is our anchor. It is the shield of freedom in the hands of all Americans. And as long as we have the Constitution, we are free. Thank you.